Today we start a short series of videos about how I've repaired the Thetford Fridge of Voyager, our Swift 635 EK motorhome. folks. Today I am going to have a look at our Thetford fridge. It's uh, not working on mains electric, it seems fine on gas uh, and when we travel along when the engine's running it's fine on 12 volts. But when we put it onto electric we get an error code 1. So I've got to investigate that, see if I can find out what the problem is. So the first thing I have to do in our van is to remove the fridge from under the counter. There's nothing is accessible. I'll show you outside. The back of our fridge, there's a grill at the top. But no grill at the bottom. So I've done a little bit of prep work so under here you can see that I've disconnected the gas. I've done that because it's a metal pipe and it doesn't stretch. So when I remove the fridge in a minute uh, that's going to stay there. That's the supply pipe. Um, so and mains have to be disconnected as well. That junction is down here. I've already removed the back panel from in here and you may be able to see there's a mains connector and there's a 12 volt multi-wire connector. I'm going to disconnect those and then as I pull the fridge out from under the cabinet the wires will pull through the hole over in the corner. Right, I've now disconnected the power cables so they are now free to be pulled through when I remove the fridge from the, under the cabinet. I've tied a puller wire to one of them just so that I'll have some way of getting them back through the hole when I'm finished. And now I've got to remove the screws that secure the fridge to the cabinet. On this fridge there's four screws, two on each side one and over this side they're underneath these little covers so the first thing we want to do is just pop the covers off now what we really got to do is remove the tray I'll remove one of the screws but they're all the same we just undo a screw a little clumsily because I'm right handed and I'm using my left hand to do it. Undo the screw and out it comes and into a little box I've got. Right now I've removed all four screws and I'm now going to remove the fridge from inside and under the cabinet. Uh, it's a little awkward to start with so you might have a bit of trouble following what I'm doing but I'm um, because I'm going to stand in your way a fair amount. But with the door open just try and ease it out a bit. Pulling on the door one side and not too much on there. Just a little, use the bottom out to start with, and the top, and then the bottom a little more. Until we get to this position, when two, two puller straps become available. The top. 
there, there. Now, if we can shut the fridge door at this point, we can ease the fridge out. A little bit at the bottom. And it's empty, obviously, so there's no... And it's... Well, it's like a domestic fridge. When there's nothing in it, most of the weight's at the back. And you get to that point, and it's now clear. Turn it round a little bit. There we are. Um, and you can see the back of the fridge, where the bit that does all the work which is in here. That's the control box, it's got all the electrics in it. And that's where we're going in a minute. See what we're doing? We've got to take the cover off the electronics box, which um, necessitates I'm doing a few more screws. And in fact, having been in here before, there's, there's a one particular screw, a little torque screw just in here, it's very difficult to undo with all these pipes above. So what I tend to do is take the whole box and loosen it. Just sort of dangle it on its own wires and then take the covers off. So we'll do that first. Right, having prepped, got all the tools we need. First thing we need is a 7mm socket just to take the there's one screw in here that secures the left hand side of the control box. Actually, if you screw it enough times will come out in your end. Something like that. The, the, one, no, the one on the other side, which is the left hand side. Not knowing me left and me right, here we are. It's the left hand side view from the front. Comes out like that. That should now fall out and just because I know it's going to, I shall keep it safe up in the little box with the other screws. And now we need a number 10 Torx to remove the top cover here. So uh, undo that screw, undo this screw here. Take those off. Oops. Has that come loose enough for me to open it? Yes, it has. So we want to wiggle that can let the box cover off around the wires so we can get in and try not to lose the screws that hold it together. So, that's with the last one. Little pot on top of the fridge. And that cover down there. Now, in here, we can see, this is the main supply side. The black wire comes in here, and the heater element is the grey coloured wire. That's there. The one at the back is the DC 12 volt one. Now the heater element goes to plugs down here, connectors, and they're nice plugged in. I'm just checking to start with it. They're nice and tight. The next thing we check is the fuse. This is, I think it's a 5 amp fuse, it is a 5 amp fuse, that's the one that does the AC, there's a 20 amp fuse next to it that does the DC, so there's nothing wrong with the fuse, so I'll just save that in the pot of, with the screws and we'll do a bit of further investigation to, to what the problem is. So the next thing we do 
a little bit of a set of tweezers and just ease the connector wires up so that we can get a reading for the heating element. So let me just ease that off there. There's one. I could probably get me probing down there. Two. And now we'll put the resistance meter on the heating element itself. Whoop. Working one handed. And so three meg is what that one says it is. Now I've already checked in the book and the book says it should be between 240 and 360. So we definitely have a faulty element and I will show you how to replace it in the next video in this series. Before we go though, you may want to check out the uh, useful link shown on screen now. This is where I, I found a PDF document listing all the errors of this type of fridge. Worth a look if you have a similar fridge to us. This link shows the reputable supplier I used to source the element. They're very knowledgeable and if in doubt as to which one you want to get, a phone call will usually provide the answer.